Hello, and welcome to Transfer Talk. My name is Heather Shepard, and I am the Assistant Dean for College Credit Plus, and we are here to talk to some former Zane State College students who have transferred onto other colleges. We want to learn about their experience and how things went for them, what they enjoyed, what worked, what didn't work, just some hot tips and things to avoid. We have a nice variety of former students here today. Um, some of the students went to in-state schools and private schools, and we also have a couple of students who have gone to out-of-state schools. We are going to start with Andrew Shepard. Andrew is a graduate researcher currently at Northern Arizona University. So I am going to turn it over to Andrew and let him tell his transfer story. Okay, um, thank you for having me. My transfer story is probably not as long as some of the other people here. So I really only had nine credits that I transferred, but I do have a bit of a, I guess, unique perspective on each one of those. So I took some of them, some like Rhodes College transfer credits at the high school, but then I also did on-campus English 101. And in addition to that, I took a Zane State online class for microeconomics. And each of those had sort of their own benefits and drawbacks. I would say the biggest benefit was taking English 101 on campus at Zane State because that class actually prepared me more for any other college class than any class that I took in high school. It was really difficult. Um, I was going home every night and reading the book but that's a lot of what college classes are like. So that was a good thing for me to kind of have under my belt. Um, microeconomics, it was online. Online classes have a lot of drawbacks. You don't really learn that much, but it was also nice to just be able to work on it on my own time. So it gives you a lot of freedom. And that's one of the things about going and doing classes at the high school that if you're sort of a mature, like independent individual, then being having your life set to a bell that rings every 40 minutes might not be like the most ideas, ideal situation for you. So that's where I would recommend like going to the college and then having those credits that you can transfer and getting into the transfer process. There are a lot of benefits and drawbacks as well. In theory, they should transfer really well. All the sort of credits that I had that would count towards your base classes transferred well, but things that I had that I needed to build upon didn't transfer well. So for example, just like math classes that I took, I took a lot of math that built upon it. So every time I would need to retransfer in that base calculus credit, which was really annoying. So that's one thing that you have to kind of keep in your mind. And another thing would be that uh, I changed my major after like um, a year and a half and having a couple transfer credits really helped me be able to graduate in four years because if I didn't have those, I would have spent my first year or so doing a lot of those base classes. And instead, I got to really dive into some of the more specialized classes, which helped me out as far as like progressing towards a degree. So I would say that's sort of my transfer story. Um, didn't have much, but it applied in different directions. I would say overall um, beneficial. That's it. Okay, thank you, Andrew. I appreciate um, your, your thoughts on that. Now you are currently in Northern Arizona University, right? Correct. And did you, did you think that there was any kind of difference in the physics program coming out of Kent State and going into another program out of state, a graduate program out of state? Did you feel prepared? Um, no, maybe. <laughs> I think the answer would be no. Um, there is a, a big difference from program to program, and Kent was great, but I don't know. Kent being a, a state school, like they, they were kind of old school in how they did things. So you don't have that good of a relationship with a lot of your professors. However, you're also at a state school, so you're not at Harvard. So you're not getting like the top tier education that you'd be getting somewhere else. So there were a lot of aspects about grad school that I didn't know about at all that I wish I would have known about. So you would, you, from this, I guess that we can conclude that you do have to be very self-directed when it comes to transfer. Nobody's, nobody's going to do that for you. Right. Extremely. And I, and I did have a good relationship with a lot of my advisors. Um, but going from 
going from Kent to NAU, it was certainly very self-driven. And I was fortunate to find a lot of that information here and there. Um, but yeah, it, it would have been great if someone would have pointed me in a couple of different directions, but it didn't happen. And you got to keep that in mind when, when transferring any from anywhere to anywhere. It's not, uh, it's not as easy as it should be. Very good point. I appreciate you coming in and, and talking. Does anybody else have any questions for Andrew before we move on to our next speaker? Okay, it looks like you're safe to go, Andrew. And we will move on to Riley Zimmerman. Riley is a, oh, I'm, I, actually, we're gonna start with Delaney. I'm sorry about that. We're starting with Delaney Zimmerman. Delaney went to Youngstown State for exercise physiology, and she is now a personal trainer. So she earned at least one associate degree from us, possibly two. Um, so I will let Delaney talk about her extraordinary um, transfer experience. Okay, thank you. So Yes, I attended Zane State College my junior and senior year of high school, um, which really allowed me to get a great jump start on college. Um, my freshman year, um, I was able to transfer a class back, and that's what allowed me to end up with my Associates of Science and Associates of Arts um, just as a freshman in uh, undergrad. Um, I would say overall, my experience was a very positive one. Um, I had a lot of my core classes that transferred over. So there was a lot of things that once I got to Youngstown, I didn't have to take. Um, I didn't take a single math class, no um, communications, which I was really grateful for. Um, the only class that I did have issues transferring was chemistry, unfortunately. So I did have to retake that, um, which wasn't necessarily a lot of fun, but Thankfully, that was the only class that I ended up having to um, retake once I got to YSU. Um, I would say that one of my, um, one of the big things for me was once I got them out of the way, um, the class sizes at Zane State were definitely a lot different than the class sizes at Youngstown. And I think that that had a great impact. Um, because I didn't have to worry about, again, like the communications or um, math, I was able to kind of get like more of a personal one-on-one -on -one help with that than if I would have been in a big um, open uh, hall of a room with a hundred plus people um, having to present in front of them, having math questions or needing something explained. So that was really great. Um, and then when it comes to uh, like, financial, I was able to graduate in three years, um, which saved a lot of money for me um, and my family. Um, and I had a really great uh, kind of like insight into it, I guess, with my sister having gone through and doing college credit plus first and seeing like her transfer process. So I kind of was able to um, have a little bit of a lead on that. So it wasn't just me going through it first, because like Andrew said, there's not a lot of guidance on that. You kind of have to um, put the work in yourself to get the classes transferred over, um, be asking the right questions, um, kind of pushing sometimes those advisors from the bigger schools to look into your classes, your schedules, seeing what you've already done, seeing what you need to do. Um, so I would say that that was another big thing for me. Um, but yeah, overall, I had a really great transfer experience. I think at least being able to get three degrees pretty quickly, um, two of them from Zane State, almost fresh out of high school was fantastic and something that I'm on, honestly really proud of. Um, but yeah, I had a really good transfer experience. Riley, you brought up something that I forgot about with you and, and something that I know your mom was really really passionate about and it's important and that's reverse transfer yes so when you left zane state and went to youngstown you did not have those associate degrees right 
No, I was still in need of one more class. Um, and so my freshman year, I took, I believe it was a um, arts or human Humanity, arts and humanities. Yeah, arts and humanities. And so I'm very grateful that I was able to take that my very first semester at school um, and then transfer it back immediately. So that's a pretty cool program and it's called Credit When Credits Do and it's reverse transfer. And if you go on to another public college in Ohio and if it's a participating college, they will check back to see if you are close to graduating in a, at the community college you attended first and they will award you a degree by transferring your credit back. So that's a really uh, that's one of the few areas that they actually do it for you, that, mm -hmm. that you don't have to push that. So that's um, a really nice way to get a degree completed when you go on to your four year. Thank you, Riley. Does anybody have questions for Riley? Delaney. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Does anybody have questions it happens, for Honestly, Delaney? it happens all the time. I'm sure that it does. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, well, we better move on to Riley since I keep keep <laughs> saying her name. <laughs> okay, so Riley's got an interesting story. She started at Zane State and then she went on to University of Kentucky and then came back to Zane State. So I am going to let her tell that story and how that worked and why she thought returning back to Zane State would be a valuable thing to do. Um, hello, Riley. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for being um, here. So, like you said, I um, started at Zane State as a college credit plus student my junior year of high school. I was there all junior and senior year. Um, on graduating high school, I went on to University of Kentucky. Um, where I got a bachelor's in equine science and management. Kind of like Delaney, it took me three years instead of the four um, due to being in college credit plus for the two years. So like she said, it was really beneficial both time-wise and financial-wise. It saved me um, an entire year. So that was really nice. Um, and then going back to Zane State, I decided on graduating from UK that I wanted to go get my physical therapist assistant degree. Um, I wanted to get into equine rehab. So I decided to get a human rehab degree, kind of broaden my uh, opportunities for jobs. So I was able to do that. I graduated in the spring and I'm currently working as a human PTA. So overall, my transfer experience was great. It was really easy, um, even for being an out-of-state school. Um, like I said, I saved an entire year, so I didn't really have to take hardly any general education courses. I think I took one math and one history. Um, and then I also took like an arts and humanities course, which again, I then transferred back to Zane State and was able to get um, an associates of science degree out of that. So I kind of did it both ways. Um, I got really lucky with my transfer experience because my advisors at Kentucky were fantastic um, and they were on top of it. They made sure that uh, they were reaching out when they needed to, um, to help me get things transferred and situated because I was able to save even a couple of courses that I had planned to take um, once I started at Kentucky. We realized that some things that I had taken already or that I could take even over the summer at Zane State would transfer back and I wouldn't have to um, take up the time using that course at Kentucky. I could take it back at home. So that was really nice. Um, really the only difficult part was just the distance. Um, so I wasn't really able to come home all the time to go to Zane State to get anything situated. So it had to be a lot of like email correspondence, but it ended up, it worked just fine. Um, 
so yeah, I, I feel really lucky with my transfer experience overall. It was, it was pretty easy. So <laughs> that's awesome. That's a great story. I know we've got a couple other really good stories coming up, but what you brought up makes with your advisors at University of Kentucky is so important. And that is how willing is, is your school where you want to go to work with you and, and to, to accept those credits. That can save you so many thousands, tens of thousands of dollars in the long run if your advisor is willing to work with you. Even if you look at the sticker price and it says it's a really expensive school and they're gonna per credit, you know, maybe it's an expensive private school, it's still worth having the conversation because if you've got advisors like Riley had at University of Kentucky, then it's, it's worth your while um, to pay that extra money per credit if you're gonna save all those credits in the long run. Thank you, Riley. Really, really good, good story and experience. Thank you. Um, let's move on to Tierra, Tierra Hill from Zane State College. And Tierra is, currently works in the College Credit Plus officer as an advisor. Um, the students love her because she really has taken all of the, her, her experiences with college and with transfer and with high school and, and rolls that right into her everyday work and does a great job. Tierra, are you with us? I am with you. Thank you for that introduction, Heather. Um, I started at Zane State in 2017 and got my wildlife conservation degree in the year of 2019. Um, like Riley, I was very fortunate with my college advisor. Um, I actually met him my freshman year at Zane State in my zoology class. Um, he was from Muskingum, and he, I knew from the moment that I met him, I wanted to go on for my four-year degree at Muskingum. So not only did he introduce himself that day, but he worked with me until I actually graduated with my associate's degree the year of 2019 from Zane State. Um, I was very fortunate with my transfer process. Uh, not only did he get to know me as a person, but he also got to know me and my academic background. So by the time I graduated with my associate's degree in wildlife conservation, um, all of my credits counted towards my four-year degree at Muskingum. So again, I didn't have to take any of my gen ed courses. And then some of those courses actually counted for my technical courses um, towards my animal studies degree. Um, I got through my first semester at Muskingum, and then I realized that animal studies wasn't the way I wanted to go. Um, I wanted more of a broad degree where I could help other people and work and communicate with others. So I decided to change my major to communication. Um, and then fortunately, I had really good academic advisors at the time. So they helped me get on the correct path to graduate still in two years with my um, bachelor's degree in communication. So I did my first two years at Zane State, and then I transferred to Muskingum, and I changed from a completely different degree um, to communication, and I was still able to graduate on time. Um, one thing that I would really recommend for students who are in the transferring process is get to know your academic advisors because they really want to see you succeed. And also go online and your website and familiarize yourself with the other college that you plan on attending because there are a lot of scholarships out there. Um, they could be dependent on where you're from and also what degree you plan on pursuing at that four year college. I was fortunate enough that I had such a good relationship with my advisor at Muskingum that he was able to show me all the opportunities that I had um, as far as scholarships. And by the time I graduated from Muskingum, I was able to graduate debt free. So um, I definitely would recommend Muskingum as a four year college, especially transferring through Zane State because they do have that familiar class size that you're used to as a Zane State student. Um, the classes weren't very large and your instructors get to know you there. So I think I had a really good experience transferring over to Muskingum. I would agree with that completely. I think um, Muskingum has been a fantastic partner for Zane State with their transfer. I know there's times where there's one class or two class that people would argue with me, but I think for the most part, even that's a really good example of even though it's more money, 
it's worth it because they streamline the process. They take care of you. Um, thank you so much, Tiara. You're amazing. And thanks for, for jumping in on this at the last minute. Um, and it's since we're talking about Muskingum, Brad Unteed is next. And Brad has been such a great um, representative of Zane State. Ever since he graduated, he has kept in close touch, um, always offers to, to help talk to students and, and coach students through their academic journey. So I'm really excited that he's here tonight so that he can talk to students about his journey um, going through Muskingum and then Kent State. He's also a Kent Stater. Brad, are you with us? Hi, Heather. Yeah, I'm with you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. So um, I originally started out at Zane State in 2011. Um, I wasn't quite ready at the time to do um, full-time college, so I started by doing um, high school in the morning, and then I'd leave for lunch and go to, to college at Zane State. Um, I was originally trying to get into the PTA program that we had. Um, so I sat down with um, the advisor at the time, and he kind of helped me plan out, you know, the classes that I should be taking. Um, I went through my junior year, and I was doing pretty good, um, or I thought so, at least. Um, we got to my senior year and um, he sat me down one day and said, listen, Brad, um, you should probably consider an, another program because based on your GPA and how competitive it is to get into PTA, uh, you're not likely to get into that program. So I had about a 3-3 at that time. Um, so luckily the day before um, I was in a science class and uh, one of the students in the class put a wireless mouse into the teacher's computer because he was late. And um, he started kind of wiggling the mouse around and messing with the teacher. And I thought that was funny. I was like, well, I just had one dream crushed. That seems kind of fun. Um, let's do it. So I talked to him and he introduced me to the teacher. And I mean, the rest is kind of history from there. Um, I, I love computers. Um, you know, I definitely turned out for the best. Um, but because of that switch, um, I was also kind of worried about how far it would put me behind. Um, and luckily, you know, the way the advisor had me planned out, it didn't put me behind at all. I just made a seamless switch into the IT um, career there. Um, so I graduated two years after I graduated high school, um, but I had two associate's degrees. I got one in technical services and one in um, e-commerce. Um, and so once I graduated there, and before this, I had never even really considered going back to another, you know, furthering my education after Zane State, but I ended up going to Muskingum um, online. And the transfer process from Zane State to Muskingum was fantastic. Um, to my understanding, most schools have a residency requirement where that says basically you have to take so many hours at each school so that way you can't just hop from one school to the next collecting degrees. Um, I transferred so many credits over that I actually had to take extra courses just to meet my residency requirement at Muskingum. Um, so I was able to take a few different marketing classes, um, business management classes, um, so that way I could minor in business management. Um, and I would never really planned on that, but it worked out with the residency requirement. Um, another thing that I did while I was going to Muskingum is I, I saw I needed to take a macroeconomics class um, and I knew that Zane State had that as well. So I actually briefly transferred kind of like dual enrolled um, and took the macroeconomics class at Zane State one semester while I was going to Muskingum as well um, to try to save some money there. Um, one, one thing I'd really recommend was that, because eventually when I went to Kent State, um, you know, I had never really thought of well, getting anything past my associate's degree at the time. So I never took the time to learn about um, scholarships or loans. Um, I definitely would recommend to students take the time now to learn that. So that way in the future, if you decide that you want to go back, you understand it. Because once I, you know, I got to my master's, I was kind of like a deer in headlights trying to figure out how I get scholarships or loans to help pay for it. Um, and the other thing was that, you know, a lot of colleges, um, advertise like, hey, we're cheaper and everything. 
Um, but I found out that some of those colleges that advertised, they were say cheaper than Muskingum because Muskingum was kind of known for being more expensive. Um, it was really just because they didn't advertise it, um, you know, the same. So I found out that Muskingum was actually the same as what some of those co other colleges were that say were cheap. Um, so I would say, do your research on the schools that most interest you and don't really pay attention to, you know, just the advertisements. Wow, that is fantastic advice. I really like that. If you like a school, check that school out. Don't worry about the price because a lot of times there's there's ways and, and between scholarships and um, work, you know, like my son, Andrew, it has a graduate assistantship and that's paying his tuition at Northern Arizona University. But there's, there's all these different ways to help finance school that don't, don't let that scare you. Really, really good advice, Brad. And you also made it very clear to me that I need to have another scholarship talk night. <laughs> so I'll do that too. Um, do any of our guests have any questions for Brad? Okay, we're gonna wrap up with Colton. And Colton Pickerel, um, I believe he graduated in 2014 from Zane State College. And then he went on to Coastal Carolina University. So he went out of state. Um, we're interested to see how his credits transferred. I believe when he graduated in 2014 from Zane State, he was uh, had a business degree. He, and he was kind of our first, the prototype for the fat pathway to business program uh, and, and let us know that that was going to be something that students would like and would transfer well. So he, you now work at Fanatics. I'm going to let you talk about what, what you did, where you transferred, how well it went, and a little bit about what you're doing these days too, Colton. Perfect. Yeah, so I have, I think, a unique path with uh, my Zane State experience. So I started there, it makes me feel old now, but a little over 10 years ago. Um, as Heather mentioned, I think I was a prototype in the Pathways to Business program. So I actually started in the Pathways to Engineering program. Did that for a year, decided engineering was really not really my thing. So I um, actually transitioned into a, I, I thought I was going to be a pharmacist for, for probably about six months. So my first part of my senior year, I took a bunch of classes to help prep for pharmacy school, applied to Finley and ONU and got in a bunch of pharmacy schools, did my visits, and I'm like, this is also not for me. I don't want to go to school for eight years. So after all of that, I, I kind of figured out, you know, what what did I want to do after um, Zane State, you know, my senior year of high school, and applied to uh, a bunch of, actually, I ended up going into economics at Coastal Carolina. So my, my undergrad was in applied economics. Um, and it worked really, really well. So my my transfer process to, to kind of hit the topic was was flawless. Like it actually was was better than I anticipated. Um, I graduated in 14 from Zane State, had an associate's degree. I think it was Associate of Science and Business um, is what it, it's actually called. Uh, but then I ended up graduating from Coastal in about three semesters. So I, I finished my undergrad um, basically a year after high school, which is which is pretty amazing. Um, did it with, you know, an associate's degree, very little debt. The really awesome thing about Zane State was that it allowed me to, to take a bunch of credits that helped apply towards that economics degree. Um, basically anything that was not like major related, I had finished, it transferred, and I was basically off, off cruising with my, my undergrad. So um, I would highly encourage anybody, like as you start thinking about what you want to do with kind of the next step after um, post-secondary and, and college credit plus that um, like take the classes there that you, you think, you know, they're not going to be super value added long-term, like the things you just have to have to get a bachelor's degree, um, was, was by far my best advice and the thing that worked out the best for me. The other really, um, cool thing I did. So kind of after undergrad, I, I got in the you know, professional career and went back from MBA a few years later. Um, the, it, what's amazing is actually going back to my Zane State days, some of my accounting classes and things like that helped me actually, you know, accumulate enough credits to be CPA eligible. I don't want to be a CPA. I work in, in finance nowadays, but um, there's a lot of things that you can kind of use that kind of free college experience for that, that can transfer and even help set up for, um, you know, things like a CPA or CNA or other kind of professional uh, designations. So 
after all that, I, I graduated undergrad in 15. I've been working ever since. Most of my time has been in, in finance. So my, my current role is I lead um, operations finance for Fanatics, which is a sports e-commerce company. Um, so I essentially get to do a lot of financial planning for fulfillment centers and manufacturing sites and customer service and all that good stuff across the globe, which is a lot of fun and keeps me busy. But um, the good news is I got to stay really close to my little about three minutes from Zane State nowadays, which is, which is pretty fun. I think that's at least the, the high level talk. It's for me, Heather. <laughs> that, that was awesome. And I can tell you that with, with the knowledge that Colton has accumulated and what he's been able to do, the people at Fanatics love him. I, I never run into anyone at Fanatics who doesn't speak so highly of you and everything that you do there. Um, but you bring up a really, really good point, and that is the value of certain classes. That while um, gaining a degree is important and transferring with that degree is important, um, transferring certain classes, you know, you want all your credits to transfer, of course, but never lose sight of the fact that the knowledge that is gained from the classes that you're taking is why you're there. That's why you're sitting in the classroom earning those things. And so if you're in a classroom where you're learning certain skills, let's say it's lab skills, um, then that class alone may give you the skills to get the pharmacy job that you need, the pharmacy tech job that you need. If you are taking a couple of accounting classes that can lead you, put you in a position to take um, an exam to be a CPA, then that, that it was worth it. So it's not always the degree and it's not always the transfer. Sometimes it's just for the sake of knowledge. Um, so don't, don't discredit if something won't transfer if you gained knowledge from that and if you gained a skill from that. And thank you for reminding us of that, Colton. That's really important. Um, I do, does anyone have questions for Colton or for anyone else um, or for each other? Okay, I am gonna sign off for this session of Transfer Talk and I appreciate everyone listening. If you have any additional questions, please email me at ccp at zanestate.edu. We look forward to helping you with your transfer journey. Thanks, bye.